Hello YouTube, this is Matt Pullen and I'm going to be starting a new series of chess videos. These uh, new videos will be about miniature games, that is, chess games that are over in 25 or fewer moves. These are all games that I have played, they're from my personal database, some of them are quite old. And I uh, won't give any, any background on uh, where these games were played or who my opponent was, because some of these games, my opponent is significantly lower rated than I am. And I think there's something a little mean-spirited about uh, giving the name of a weaker opponent that you were able to dispatch very quickly. But just uh, having said that, uh, just because these games are short games doesn't mean that they're bad games or that there's nothing that we can learn from them. In each case, I'm going to go through, uh, try and go through fairly quickly, but also uh, point out where the player who lost uh, went wrong. And sometimes they violated fundamental rules of chess, and sometimes it looked like they were following fundamental rules of chess, but, uh, you know, falling victim to the uh, you know, cruel specifics of the individual opening that these took place in. Uh, so this first game was uh, played in, uh, well, I guess I did, said I wouldn't uh, tell you where they were played. This game was in the Chicago Open of uh, the year 2000, so 14 years ago. And uh, it is, well, it starts out as a Pierce, e4, d6. Uh, d4, knight f6, knight c3, knight bd7. Uh, there are a couple of uh, GMs from, I think it's uh, Denmark, who refer to this uh, knight bd7 on move 3 as the lion defense. But really, it's just a fancy way to reach a uh, Philidor structure. For instance, if white plays knight f3, then black is playing e5, and, you know, we've reached the same position after four moves that you'd reach in the Hanham uh, variation of the Philidor, where white might continue bishop c4, and then bishop e7, and, you know, there are various sharp lines white can try, uh, or, you know, just castles, castles, a4, stuff like this. Uh, but in this position, there are... Uh, there are a few different ways that white can try and play, but still black is aiming for the same thing. He's, you know, trying to play e5 and get a Philidor set up. Uh, one of the challenges to this move order is 4f4, which white played in this game. Uh, so black responded with e5. And it is interesting, this, this f4 move, it, it leaves e4 uh, with out the possibility of being defended by a pawn. I mean, currently e4 is well defended, but it's just a feature of, you know, these this broad pawn center. Of course, white also has a lot of space to operate with. Uh, in this position, white maintained the tension with 5 knight f3, but it's worth pointing out that if white just captures all the pawns, f takes e, d takes e, d takes e, knight takes e, queen takes e, king takes, uh, I believe that uh, black is uh, preferable in this position because of the uh, the isolated center pawn. I believe the isolated center pawn is more significant than black's lack of castling privileges. For instance, say white develops with the goal of castling queenside with check, plays bishop f4, forcing black to defend the knight, and then white castles, pinning the bishop. So black has to do something about the e5 knight, but he just plays king e7. And this position, I feel, is perfectly fine for black. So uh, he plays knight f3, the, uh, the correct move. And here, because there's no, there's no real good way to reinforce this uh, e5 square, again, in this particular move order, uh, except for queen e7, and that has, that has its own problems. Uh, so black took on d4, and white played queen takes d4, which is the most aggressive, since there's no longer a knight coming to c6 that can gain time. However, occasionally after black advances the d-pawn again to d5, the bishop can come to c5 and hit the queen. 
And this is uh, particularly attractive for black, given that the move f4 has weakened this uh, dark square diagonal. Uh, so here, uh, black played c6, an understandable move. He's allowing his queen to develop, maybe challenge the white queen if need be. And the c6 works well against the knight on c3. Uh, so here, white played uh, bishop to c4. Now, what could be wrong with this move? White already had a development advantage. He's three pieces in play. He's got the, you know, spatial advantage. He's got pawns on e4, f4. Black has pawns on d6, c6. He just he brings another piece into play, develops his, uh, his king's bishop to the most aggressive square, where it points at f7. I mean, what could possibly be wrong with this move? Uh, it's got to be healthy and aggressive looking. Uh, actually, bishop c4 is not as good as it looks. Better would be for white to simply play bishop e3, and this prepares long castle uh, on the next move. And white, even though he's leaving his bishop on f1 for the time being, uh, has a preferable game. He's got a uh, you know, healthy pawn center, has developed his pieces behind it. Uh, white is doing okay. Bishop c4, um, I don't know if I've given it away yet, but I was actually, uh, I'm actually black in this position. Um, and I think I played this, uh, this very line, again, in, a, in an online simul against uh, Alexei Shirov, where I was black and he was white. Shirov played this line with, uh, you know, the knight f3 and the queen taking on d4. And in this position, he played his bishop to e3, which is the superior move. I don't have, I, I remember that he beat me, but I don't have the, uh, the score of that game. Again, it was quite some time ago. But my opponent in this game played bishop to c4. And I played b5. This is an interesting move. Another idea is to play d5 here. Again, uh, moving the... Uh, Moving the center pawn for the second time uh, sort of breaks a fundamental rule of chess in that you, you, know, you don't lose time in this way, uh, moving a pawn twice unless it's to recapture. But uh, it has a concrete point here in that this uh, bishop is coming to c5 and taking advantage of the, uh, you know, the weakened dark square diagonal. And uh, even though white is ahead in development significantly, the opening of the center is going to favor black because of the difficulty white is, is going to have getting his king castled. Uh, for instance, e takes d5, bishop c5, and uh, you know, after queen d3, queen e7 check, white doesn't have any great moves here. I mean, if, uh, if the king goes to d1, then this knight can just come and threaten to hop on f2. And if the queen blocks on e2, then black can play knight to b6, and they'll be threatening this bishop, and also threatening to recapture the pawn on d5, and, you know, black is, uh, black is probably fine here. Uh, but the move I played in the game is b5. <clears throat> How could this possibly be okay? White has four pieces developed in the game. Uh, black is lashing out on the queen side. His king is still in the center. He's got all these pieces on the back rank. Yet b5, I, I feel, is quite playable. In fact, uh, when I pump this into Houdini, it suggests the best move is for white to simply retreat the bishop to e2, believe it or not. Uh, bishop b3 looks like a natural move, simply getting out of danger and maintaining the attack on f7. But uh, white is getting Noah's arced. After pawn to c5, and then this queen goes somewhere, let's say c, uh, d2, and then c4, and the bishop is trapped. This mechanism for trapping uh, the white king bishop shows up often in the uh, Rui Lopez. And the, the age of the trap gives it its nickname, the, uh, the Noah's Ark trap. Uh, so bishop b3 seems possible, but is losing. My opponent played the super aggressive bishop takes f7 check. And 
Well, got to take it. And then knight g5 came in for check. And as usual in this type of situation, the best retreat for black is to play king g8. You know, it's where he, he's got the most pieces on the king side. Uh, albeit they're unmoved, but they do a decent job of protecting the black king. Uh, what The one thing that black needs to watch out for, though, because of the configuration of the, uh, the bishop and pawn around black's king, is got to watch out for this diagonal. If white were to land a check on this diagonal and then, you know, de destroy all the black pieces that block the check, then this would be game over. The black king has nowhere to go, and the knight. You know, the knight is also attacking some squares on this diagonal. So that is uh, that is a diagonal that black really has to watch out for in any type of situation where he's pulling his king back to g8. Uh, so my opponent uh, played a4 in this position, you know, trying to trying to destroy the point on uh, b5, which is guarding the c4 square, which is on this diagonal. But really, if a4 is the only, if that's the only threat that white has, he, he doesn't have enough in this position. I, I don't think the, uh, the piece of sacrifice is not justified. So after a4, I mean, yeah, the, the threat to the, uh, the b5 pawn is serious. I mean, black can't defend with the a6 because his rook is hanging. But there's plenty of other things that black can do. Remember, he is up a piece. So queen b6, threatening to trade off the queens, and uh, white doesn't want to allow that. He retreats. And then knight c5, again, hopping into the center, hitting the queen, unleashing this bishop. Uh, so the queen then goes back to e2, because the queen wants to keep watch over the possibility of getting on this diagonal, because that is really the only source of play in... Uh, White's position. So as long as Black can, you know, prevent access to any squares on that diagonal, he should just be able to consolidate too. Uh, what is Black thinking here? He plays b4, kicking this knight. Uh, I guess if the knight goes away, then you know it's, it's one fewer defender on e4, and uh, Black can play to win this pawn. But I mean, we're what I've just been talking about about access to this. Uh, c4 g8 diagonal to attack the black king. Uh, why is black just allowing white to hop on there uh, when, when that is the only potential threat in white's position? So white just jumped on this. He played queen c4 check. Black played d5. White captured the pawn on d5. And instead of capturing back, which would be fairly disastrous, black threw in bishop a6. Now, white has discovered checks, but they don't really do anything because uh, white must re respect the threat to the queen. Yet the queen wants to desperately stay on this diagonal to the black king. So uh, he found the only square that does that, queen a2. Again, looks clever, keeps the queen on the same diagonal as the king, threatens discovered checks. Uh, but then black, with this pawn sacrifice, b3, just shuts the door on white's entire plan. Uh, c takes b3, uh, access to the d3 square is granted, and you'll notice that the white queen is entombed. It's pawns on b2, b3, a4 form a tiny sarcophagus for the, uh, for the white matriarch. Uh, knight d3 check. Again, it's just all all heck breaks loose in the center for white. There's nothing left defending this position. King d2, queen f2 check, king d1, knight b4. And uh, white resigned in this position because if the queen comes to b1, then there's, uh, you know, this bishop to d3 and the white queen is getting slaughtered. And if the queen comes out here, then there's um, a checkmate coming up. So, uh, yeah, what can we say about this game? This was a uh, position where white had an aggressive position and played what seemed like a sensible developing move. But 
uh, the bishop became vulnerable on c4, and it didn't really address any of uh, the problems in white's position, which is this, uh, you know, the, the latent attack on the dark squares. Um, so black was able to play b5, which looks incredible that black is able to play a move like this, but, you know, the sacrifice on f7 is not sound, uh, dropping back to b3 also loses, so it's just one of those positions where uh, black is able to flaunt the, uh, the rules of, uh, you know, healthy fundamental chess opening play. Yet, uh, after bishop e3, I mean, white seem this is the correct developing move, and white seems to have a better game. So uh, this was the first video in uh, my series of uh, miniatures. Let me know what you think of this. You know, if you want to see more of these, uh, I'll try and get more uh, regular chess videos uh, coming at you. Anyway, have a good one on YouTube.